tell us a little bit of how you got here. What's your path, that, your story that got you on your path? Okay. Um, I grew up with not an actual set religion with my family. Um, and I was always allowed to explore different things, go to um, people's houses. And um, like if I was staying over a friend's house, I would go to their church or a synagogue, depending on their religion with them. Um, so I experienced many different things just in general from that aspect when I was younger. Um, when I got into high school, I took comparative religion classes. And they don't really cover a huge amount of religions. They kind of cover the basic major world religions in those. Um, and specifically, <laughs> I was walking um, to lunch with one of my friends and we were discussing religion because we got out of our class. And she was like, well, what is your religion? And I was like, well, I don't know. So she started asking me questions. And at the end of the conversation, she was like, you're pagan. And I was like, well, what's pagan? <laughs> And that's how I started, <laughs> was a friend telling me that I was pagan and I had to discover what that was. <laughs> and so how did you discover how that was? I was a Borders pagan. <laughs> that lovely Borders with, had like three huge sections of books on different various traditions within paganism. So I went and um, I didn't have enough money to buy books. So I was one of those bad people that goes to the bookstore and sits in the aisle and reads the books in the bookstore without purchasing them. Um, and then a few of them I did purchase when I had um, enough money set aside to do so. And that's kind of how I started. And I had a really, really old um, Macintosh computer in our house with an old dial up. And so in the middle of the night, I would set a little um, sweater on the dial up so it wouldn't make too much noise. So my mom wouldn't wake up get on the internet and would just explore different websites and things and try to with the resources I had. <laughs> we actually wrote the entire Witch School uh, system on a 486 ourselves <laughs> with a dial up. So we understand that. So you basically follow the same path. You didn't let your parents know that. Today, what do you practice? Now you're much, much older and, and an adult. Actually, for the parents not knowing, my dad always took me to the borders and he knew what section I was in and he was okay with it. Oh, good. <laughs> um, my mom was uh, not sure about it. Um, she, so I actually sat down with her with the books that I did purchase and I told her, you can look at these books whenever you want to. There's nothing I need to hide in these. There's nothing bad that I'm doing or interested in. So they actually pretty much knew from right away. They just, I didn't have resources of a community or a store nearby or anything like that. So I kind of just did what I had available to me at the time until I got older. And then when you got a little bit older, when did you actually start seriously practicing? What, what was that like? Oh, serious. Um, that's, that's an interesting word because... <laughs> um, um, I would say like true serious like day to day, honestly, I didn't really get into until I moved down to Florida, um, which was, what, let's see, it's 2000, so what, it was eight, eight years ago, roughly, mm -hmm. eight, yeah, eight or nine years ago, I moved down to Florida. Um, life seemed to always get in the way, unfortunately. Um, you know, at home, I couldn't do a huge amount. My mom knew, but she was wary. So she knew I read books, but I couldn't really set up an altar. I would do like little spells and rituals and stuff here and there, but it wasn't like a true, serious, constant thing. Um, and I would, I did a lot of research. Um, I would do funerals for like my, when my aunt's pa uh, pet passed away, I did a pagan funeral for uh, Dharma. Uh, was the dog's name um, and we spread her ashes um, and then I uh, when I went to college college you know you can't have candles you can't have this you can't have that you have this tiny little dorm room that you share with somebody it doesn't work out too well um, so yeah like I really not until I moved down here and had a true my own space that I didn't share with somebody else when I was living in the apartment by myself is when I really started exploring so I didn't have to worry about other people's stuff or, you know, bothering anybody <laughs> with what I was doing. And so, anybody. so what are you practicing today? Um, I do, uh, what's, I brought a sense, um, Hellenic polytheism, 
um, is a tradition that I identify with. I'm not part of a organization um, as of right now. I do have um, Helenon is a um, website that I am uh, part of as a member and I've been going through the basic education class with it, but I'm not part of like a local group of that organization by any means. And I also have a membership lifetime for which school. Um, so when that website goes up, I'll have that because I wanted to support. I have a lot of friends in the Karelian tradition and I wanted to make sure I support their efforts to get the website going. And so, so you do, are you a part of a group? You lead a group, right? Yes. Um, I'm actually the, um, one of the keepers of Sanctuary Realms of Spiritual group, uh, Growth. It's an um, open group in the Jacksonville area, and I run it with Dustin Goodall and Mark Stein. Um, and it's an open group, and uh, we do uh, topics on paganism and different traditions. We welcome uh, others from other groups or just people that are in the group to also, because as an open group, we don't want to just be the only people doing things. You can teach somebody something, but until they actually do it themselves, have they truly learned it? and experienced it. So we try to get people that come to also participate in leading things as well. And so you, so you kind of, this is more of an open shared circle and, yes. and a teaching circle and kind of just introducing it. Uh, sounds like it's a lot of fun. So you're also involved with Nephoplec. Yes, I am the secretary of Northeast Florida Pagan Leadership Coalition. And um, we are a organization that is a, um, basically all of the, groups that are interested in the Northeast Florida area can join as member groups and the you would have a primary person um, which represents the group so we don't have necessarily members within this organization as much as member groups that um, we decided to get everybody together so that we can do bigger things in our community as pagans versus you know if you took a project and you just have one group doing it you're gonna have some impact but if you can get, say, 14 groups together, which is what we have right now, together to do a project, then it's a bigger impact. So the community sees, oh, there's 14 groups of the, you know, the pagan community that are supporting this project. And so you're also, I heard earlier today about PPD, Jax? I am the local coordinator for Jacksonville Pagan Pride Day. Um, I have been involved with Pagan Pride Day since 2010 um, when I first moved down here and I met a group that was a um, Wiccan group um, called Grove of the Everlasting Moon and they had just received the Pagan Pride down here and we're trying to figure out what to do because they kind of got it, their hands on it last minute and trying to scrounge to get everything together. So I got involved with getting vendors and then the next year I became a coordinator. <laughs> so not uh, how it happens. <clears throat> yes, it does. <laughs> so it's used. So one last question. Um, so do you have a favorite spell or a favorite magical practice of your own? that I would say that I have a necessarily favorite. Every time I do something, I feel like, oh, I really like that. Um, so it becomes like a new favorite almost. Um, I write, okay. <laughs> I do uh, try to write a lot of my material, um, but I do, I do try to grab some ancient sources and stuff within um, the Hellenic path. Uh, but I do write some of my own things, so I do have, um, processions are a big part of, um, ritual. So I actually made my own processional song. That's wonderful. So let me, let me, I, I lied, I'm going to ask one more question. Any advice for young, for any young ladies? Because it's really, sounds like you've gone through a, a, a path that's very, very much uniquely your own, but also is echoed by other young ladies. Can you, you know, so, so a lot of young ladies who might be listening to this, can you give them any advice? Um, one of the big things is just to become, make sure that you're aware of your surroundings at all time um, and what opportunities are around. Sometimes you can think that, oh, I can't do this because you haven't done something like that before. But I, I never ran an organization before and now I help run three just by 
figuring it out as I went along and keeping myself aware of everything that was going on around me, opening myself up to the messages and the information of what needs to be done, um, where am I being directed by deity to go. And most of the time, those places will make you uncomfortable um, highly <laughs> uncomfortable, especially if you're an introverted person like me. <laughs> um, but the biggest thing is to listen to those opportunities and try it out. You know, don't dismiss it right away because you'd be amazed at the things that you can do when you actually put in the effort and just, you know, try and do them and not just dismiss that you can't do something just because you've never done it before. It sounds like too big of a project. Um, because I came to Florida and never been part of a group before ever. Um, but like I said, I was like a book pagan, so to speak, a library pagan <laughs> or what have you. Um, and, um, now I put on my own rituals for the community and I help support the community through running several organizations. And I would never, if you would have asked me when I moved here in 2010, I would have told you were crazy to say that I would be doing the things that I'm doing now. <laughs> so just... Don't close yourself off to, oh, I've, I can't do these things or, you know, this is scary. I don't want to try to do this thing um, that came up. Just keep yourself open to opportunity. Listen to deity in the universe. And um, when opportunities come up and there's a role that needs filling and you're available, maybe that's where you're supposed to be. Thank you.